Welcome to Bar Chart's series of educational webinars designed to enlighten you on a variety of trading ideas and concepts, inform you of the pages and tools Bar Chart provides related to these concepts, and offer some traders insight to help you make a more informed investment decision. Today's session, introducing Bar Chart's Option Flow Screener. Now, I'm excited about the opportunity to present Bar Chart's newest premier screener feature, the Options Flow Screener. This screener takes from the best of the other premier option screeners like Unusual Options Activity and Unusual Options Volume, which screen on filters like volume and open interest comparisons and adds uh, enhancements of premium, the cost of the trade, uh, trade sentiment, um, trade to open, and market code, which will help identify the characteristics of each trade. Now, from there, traders can begin to process the trade forensics, which starts with highlighting options, trades that are transacted across multiple U.S. exchanges, and identifies those large strike where institutional traders are buying or selling, and this can provide both directional sentiment and also volatility insight for the underlying security. So let's do this. And hey, there I am. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. My name is John Rowland, Bar Charts Senior Market Strategist and Head of trading education. And as I mentioned in the opening today's session, it's going to be a little bit different from our usual webinars. Uh, this will be an introductory examination of the components and filters of Bar Charts uh, Options Flow page. Now, the aim is to acquaint you with the intentions of the features that are found on the Options Flow page. However, Today's session will not be a how-to or an application methodology webinar. This further forensic process will come in a webinar that I will produce and deliver sometime in March. Now think of today in this way. You've purchased a high-performance vehicle, and today I'll be showing you where to find the features like the lights, the wipers. I'm going to show you how to adjust the mirrors and your seatbelt. And in March, I'll show you how to get the most out of your uh, performance vehicle. So with that being said, before we get started, please welcome our moderator and Bar Charts Project Director, Gene Baker. Hello, Gene. Hi, John. How are you on this uh, great Wednesday? I am just doing fine. Hump day, right? Yeah, hump day is, is, is right. Wednesdays are hump days, uh, but we've got a uh, great introductory session plan for everybody today about this new options flow page on our website. Yes, we're very, we're very excited about it. And I know, Gene, you're going to be busier than a one-armed paper hanger today answering a lot of questions. So folks, be patient with Gene, and we'll try to get to all, all, all of your questions throughout today's yeah. session. And as John is saying, if you do have questions, because because John is going to be going through the screener page, you know, the options flow page and showing you uh, how to use things. So if you do have specific detailed questions, you know, throw them at me in that chat box. I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. Or uh, if, if it's something for John to answer, I'll send the question along his way. Cool. Excellent, Gene. Thank you so much. All right, folks, just a reminder that today's session is for educational purposes only and decisions by self or hold securities are best under um, made under the advice of a professional financial professional and that under no circumstances shall we be liable for it, uh, any loss or damages that you may incur as a result of any trading or investment activity that you or anyone takes based on any information or material that you receive through barchart.com and our services. Okay. So let's do this. Um, hang on, I go 
Let's see which one I want. This one. Yep. So you might be uh, familiar with uh, some of our other premier options pages. For instance, our options, uh, unusual options activity page. Now this page sorts uh, by high volume related to uh, open interest. And then we have another page is our unusual options volume page, which sorts by current volume over uh, an average volume. Now the options flow page accounts for both volume and open interest, but it filters by something called premium. And the premium is the total dollar amount of each trade. So premium equals the option price times volume or the size of the trade times 100, which is the underlying share. So if an option price is $1 times 1,000 options volume, and each option represents 100 shares, then that trade would represent $100,000 premium value. So the theory is that large premium trades can identify large institutional trader activity. And the larger the trade, the greater the commitment. Now, armed with this information, we can identify those large trades and reveal institutional traders' footprints. And these footprints will reverberate throughout the market in terms of, let's say, potential market direction, uh, changes in applied volatility, and types of uh, option trading strategies. So, the screener will give you uh, up to 500 premium, premier, premium trades, and it will sort them from largest to smallest. Now, if you're looking at an individual symbol, let's say a stock or an ETF, you're only gonna get to see 100 premium trades. But you can sort this by the largest to the smallest or from the smallest uh, to the largest. The other thing you can do is you can also filter under premium by a size of a premium or a range of a premium. You might discover that there's a certain range of trades that you want to look like. You know, for instance, I'm just going to put a number out there. Let's say trades that are between half a million to five million or something to that effect. So let me just lost my pace here. Hang, hang with me for a second. All right, so premium is made up of these two components price and volume so let's start with price or in this case what we call the trade and so the trade is the price of the options that were traded in this particular um, identification so let me go over here to help and this is one of the unique features of this filter. Trade represents price of the options contracts. And then we're gonna use trade to help us identify something called sediment. Um, and notice in the flow here, we do see under trade that some of our trades have a different color, a red color or a green color. Now, if you're colorblind, I apologize for this, but uh, hang with me. I'll give you a little trader's tip a little bit later how you can get around get around that. But here's here's the intent um, or the concept that comes from the trade or this sentiment. It comes from this dynamics of the initiation of a trade. In other words, all things being equal, and now remember all trades require both a buyer and a seller. 
But if a buyer is willing to lift an offer, take the ask, then this can be inferred as an aggressive action. And buyers of calls benefit from rising prices, a bullish sentiment. Buyers of puts benefit from falling prices, a bearish sentiment. Now, if someone is willing to hit the bid, right, sell, sellers of calls benefit from falling prices, and that's bearish, and seller of our puts benefit from rising prices or bullish. So in March webinar, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the concept of sentiment and sentiment for um, a single leg or a standalone trade can be more polarizing, but when trades become multi-legged, then sentiment of one leg might be different than the collective sentiment of the greater trade. And we'll discover that in our March webinar. But again, I can sort by um, trade sentiment. For instance, if I go over here where it says trade sentiment and I look at just bullish sediments notice that right we're getting all the greens but some of them are where we are buying the trade at the ask right and we're buying a call so that gives us a bullish sentiment but if i'm selling a put on the bid that too is a bullish sentiment right so what was that trader's tip that I was talking about? Well, notice that under the bid and ask, if it is bolden, that tells you that trade occurred on the ask or that trade occurred on the bid. And that would be that aggressive uh, trade or our, our trader is being aggressive, lifting the offer, hitting the bid. And then all you need to do is look at to see are they buying the ask of a call or are they buying the ask of a put or are they selling the bid of a put or are they selling the bid of a call to get that bullish or bearish sediment so the second part of the premier a preview excuse me is volume and volume will be represented in our screener here in two parts. First, the size, and this represents the size of the individual trade. And this is what is used to calculate uh, the premium. And then we have volume, or the total volume of the contracts traded that are associated with this particular option, the strike, the expiration, if it's a put or a call. And it also includes the transaction that, we, that the screener is identifying. So volume and open interest. So large volume compared to low open interest is an excellent, excellent determinant of whether a trade is being opened. Large volume compared to let's say large open interest could indicate a trade being closed and would re require some further investigation. Now, small volumes compared to large open interest makes it difficult to determine whether a trade is being opened or closed. And the only way that we can confirm all of these actions is we'd have to look at next day's open interest change to decipher what we were seeing in these trades. So let me see if I can kind of give you an example here, what I'm trying to put forth. And the screener always changes for me, but let's see, okay, here. So for instance here, we have a trade that has a bullish sentiment buying the ask, but the size of this trade was 42,000 contracts and the, um, open interest was 58,000 contracts. So what I can do is I can come back in here where it says links and I can go back and look at trade history on this one. 
And let's go back a little bit of time in history. Notice that up until this point here, until we see this 36,000 volume trade or trades, um, our open interest was not there. And then once that trades or trades occurred, then the next day the open inches increased by that 36,000. That would be a confirmation that these were being opened trades. Notice again, large volume versus low open inches. You know, a couple other points here is another day where we had, um, which was a volume that was, let's say, in between or less than our open inches, but not until the next day did we see that open inches increased by that 7,000. Now, here we have multiple days where we have volume in a large open inches, but you can see our open inches doesn't really change much. So this is just day trading type volume. Now, today we have large volume on a large open inches. And I would say there's probably a high probability that when we look at open inches tomorrow, we'll probably see open inches fall, you know, maybe somewhere around uh, this value. So looking at open interest and volume is a way to tell us, determine if we're seeing trades that are being opened or closed. So taking this concept, volume and open interest, and combining it with our previous trade sentiment brings us to our next uh, advanced uh, feature. And that would be something called to open. and this special labels. So what is to open? Well, you'll see here, this is on the sign, this little asterisk here is um, where we will find the designation of to open. And to open designation infers that this trade is being, or is the beginning of a new trade. Now, these are the trades for the most part that we will be wanting to put our focus on, right? Those trades that are being uh, open. Now, to open a trade will, will give you just a O in parentheses, would be a trade where the trade occurred in between the bid and the ask. It doesn't have an obvious uh, sentiment. Those that are buy to open are where they're reaching up to take the ask or lifting the ask. Buy or sell to open would be there's where they're reaching down and they're selling the bid. Again, there could be a sentiment to that. Now, multi-leg trades to at this point becomes a little bit more granular. So the assumption what I've been doing right now here is we're looking at this as kind of a broader perspective. But in reality, when you start using this page, most of you are going to find yourself in analyzing just a few stocks or uh, a few ETFs, maybe ones that you're familiar with, and isolating those trades of uh, this ideal of, you know, that open to open designation. Now, we'll do a deeper int um, introspective of breaking down opening trades um, in our advanced video. Now, this brings us to the next part of one of the features that are, is on this page, and that is the code. Now, the code is what we call the trade conditions or the aspects that are surround each individual trade. Now, if I go here and click on this little blue hyperlink, that'll take me to this page. And this is the options, times and sales trade conditions. And you'll see a lot of different nomenclature based on these trade conditions. So things like, auto, multi-leg spreads, single legs, one-sided, um, any trade that has FT in it represents a floor trade. Now, all of our codes will also be categorized in something called flags. And flags will sort all these codes based on 
certain types of conditions. So here it says flags make it easier for you to group these certain trades. So we have block, we have uh, sweep, we have regular, we have cross, we have floor, and we have non-RTH or regular trading hours. These would be your um, pre and post type trades. So again, in the next level of video, we'll discuss each of these categories. But in the meantime, if you're not familiar with these or you're new to all of this, um, I would just concentrate on regulars and single-legged trades. But then the code and the flag will be, let me see if I can give you some more information to help you or at least expand your knowledge here. So in the flags, right, we will see something that's called a block trade or a block. So this is typically our large institutional traders. And these are typically hedges. Again, these are generalities, but you can count on these to a certain extent. So a large institutional trader might trade options for hedges, hedging purposes. In other words, for insurance, right, an insurance policy. And hedges typically or potentially lose money. And they are in the opposite of a desirable outcome. Again, at generality, if I'm a hedge, uh, uh, managing money and I have this large portfolio and I'm long the market, I might buy puts to protect myself to the downside. Buying puts would be an opposite um, desirable outcome from what I would want the market to do. Now think of it like car insurance, right? You don't buy in car insurance because you want, you know, to wreck your car, right? You buy insurance in case that uh, unlikelihood would happen. And if you never wreck your car, then that insurance that you pay for, that monies that you spent, this money is, that is gone, right? So hedging is really just a cost of business for a lot of these large institutional traders. Sweep is where a trader is trying to execute trades over multiple exchanges, multiple options, exchanges. And usually what they're trying to do is they're trying to accumulate a large amount of volume in a very short period of time. Cross represents in-house trades that are executed by the um, broker that matches up customers. Now, I'll give you a kind of an example. When I was a energy broker, I might have a customer, let's say Exxon, who produces oil, and then have Valero, which is a refinery that consumes oil and turns it into gasoline. So what I might do is I might match up my buyer and my seller. So those would be in-house cross trades. Floor represents uh, trades that are initiated by floor traders. And now floor traders take positions using their own capital. Now, when we start getting deeper into our process, what we might discover is that a lot of the floor type trades will be more actionable type trades. Think about it. These are traders that are willing to put their capital to risk. And they're looking for outcomes that are with the transaction or with the trade. Now, remember that there is a buyer and seller to every trade. So not necessarily does it mean that our floor trader is taking a long or short position. What, what I'm saying here is that floor trades, there's probably a higher probability that one side of that trade is speculation. So this is where the screener starts to get really interesting. So what I could do is I could come back in here and say, all right, let's look at just the bullish trades. And I'm just going to look at the ask, right? And my flag is going to be the floor. And then I'm going to apply it. And again, then these are the types of trades that I might be more inclined to start doing more forensic analysis 
um, and looking for potential trade opportunities. Again, if I wanted to be very uh, conservative, you know, I'd probably be starting with the single leg trades, where the multiple leg trades, there's a lot of nuances in there that it might be a little bit more difficult for me uh, to make those distinctions. So again, large institutional traders can be initiating trades that will move the market, but a lot of those trades are hedges where floor traders or floor traders are taking the opposite side of hedges are looking to benefit from a positive uh, price movement in correlation with the position that they're taking. So let's do this. Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk about is uh, the expiration. Now, again, part of this process that I was saying to you, what you're probably going to discover is you are probably spend more time uh, looking at a very specific stock or ETF when you do your analysis, and you might glean that information from the main page. So if I'm looking for, let's say, I'm looking at... Um, NVIDIA here. I could just screen on that symbol and then it's going to show me uh, all the NVIDIA trades. Now I got to change this back to my originals and we'll just take that off. And now we're seeing all of the flow trades in NVIDIA. Now I could also go to the NVIDIA page and on the left hand column here you have options flow, which is basically the same thing what it is. I just uh, went from the flow page to this page by identifying just NVIDIA, NVIDIA trades. So what is the next thing that I can do? Well, I'm gonna look at um, expirations. And why I, why I do that is I might sort based on expirations, which is what is going on right here. And then what I, will discover is that there might be a cluster here we can see there are three trades that are on the same expiration date and the same strike so here's a cluster of trades this might be more significant in terms of breaking down uh, actionable uh, trades the other thing that i uh, might start looking for is not only um, the same expiration but for instance, let's see if I can find one. Oh, here's a good example down here. Here we see uh, two calls of different strikes of the same expiration. And what could be going on here is I want to start looking at the volume of those trades. And that volume of those trades might indicate to me that there is uh, something common to them. Now, again, I could go into um, our options quotes here and look at those trades. And I think these were 620, so I might have to expand my near. Okay, so yeah, so what we're probably seeing here is some type of spread that is going on. I think they were puts where you know, you're know you trading one set of puts versus uh, another set of puts. So again, a cluster or similar expirations or similar volumes might be um, one of those trades. So this could be, again, this could be a, uh, a put spread or this could be maybe a, a butterfly or part of an iron condor. Again, we'll go a little bit more detail when we get a chance uh, in the March session. And again, I could sort by strikes as well and look for some of those similar volumes. Again, you know, the volume on these two trades here relatively similar. I would like to see them a lot closer, but again, it's probably and most likely this was some kind of a, a spread trade. And again, notice that our code here 
does say uh, multi-legged. Now, those are pretty much the more important columns, uh, filter inputs. And again, all of these can be uh, broken down granularly. You could look at, for instance, just monthly expirations or weekly expirations uh, in the expiration process. You could pick a certain timeline as well to help narrow in those candidates. So we let's talk about the other columns here. So symbol, again, I think that's pretty obvious. Price is the price of our underlying at the time of the transaction of this option. Again, is it a put or a call? We've talked about strike expirations. We briefly looked at what we talk about the bid and the ask. What is the current size that's on the bid and ask at the time of that trade? Um, the trade, right? The cost of that trade, the size, the premium, the volume, open interest. We've gone through most of these now. And now let's get to implied volatility or IV. So this represents the implied volatility that strike at the time of the trade. Again, what I can do here in for my implied volatility traders is I can go to quotes again, options quotes, and I can look at the implied volatility of that option that was trading versus the implied volatility of all the strikes that are related to this expiration. And also I can look at that implied volatility as it relates to uh, historical. Now, again, what we might look for is where an increase in implied volatility versus let's say all of them. And in this case, this implied volatility was 49.50, where you know, for those, I think they said it was around 42. Let me see again. You know, 43. So we know that that trade created a little bit higher implied volatility. That could mean that the premiums are a little bit more expensive. And then those of you who are volatility traders, that might give you an insight into different types of volatility trades that you could use. The other thing you could do is look at the time of day that that trade occurred and look at is that influencing price or is the price of the underlying stock changing dramatically why these options are trading again correlating price action with volatility and we have delta now delta has uh, three uses or three intents now the first one is the most obvious that it's a measurement of sensitivity of the options price to the price movement of the underlying. And again, if you don't understand this basic concept, I think it's time for you to take a step back and you know get a little bit better grasp on options trading. Now we do have some tutorials in our archive webinars on Greeks and how what delta is and what does it mean. The other uh attention or use we can use this is the gauge of moneyness or in other words how far is our option strike from the current price so at the money options we'll have the deltas near 50. Uh, out of the money will be below 50 in the money will be above 50. and the third purpose or intent will be for those advanced options traders that are using it delta for their hedge ratio in other words how they determine their delta neutral now the delta is color coordinated too so green deltas represent calls and that's because calls have a positive correlation to the underline in other words delta has a positive correlation to the underline and puts puts have, are red because they have an inverse correlation. Delta has an inverse correlation to um, the underlying price movement. 
Now, in generality here, again, um, if I'm looking at a high delta trade with a high open interest and high volume, now that's probably a trade that's being closed. If I'm looking at, say, a delta of between 25 and 40, and I'm just kind of spitballing here, and it has a low uh, open interest, that is probably a trade that is being open. Again, a trade that I probably want to look at for a possible tradable idea. Again, in this case, here we see large volume, small open interest, and that delta is right around 40. A lot of your floor traders, when they're doing trades, they were doing trades that I would say were probably near about 5% of away from current price. And that would put you in that kind of that mid 30s to low 40 delta area. All right, and then our final uh, filtering process is time of day or time the trade was executed. So this is an important feature that we need to uh, discuss. So first of all, uh, our options flow data is delayed 15 minutes and the page doesn't really start updating in every new day until approximately, this is 8.50, uh, central time. So those of you who live on the East Coast or you trade based on what the exchange trades is, we're talking about 20 minutes after the opening bell. So you got to kind of let it warm up a little bit in, in that sense. But the time of day or the trade time is the time that that trade was executed. So now what does that um, have uh, some importance to me. Well, large trades or large actionable trades can be executed any time throughout the day as market conditions create those opportunities. But typically, trades that are open in that first hour of trading represent better trading opportunities. And trades that are executed, let's say, in the last hour of the day are typically trades that are being closed. Now understand that this is not set in stone, but what that traders can open and close trades throughout the day. But knowing that there's more action or volume or activity in the openings and closes is essential for our analysis. So why do I say this? Well, because what happens is I might be more inclined to start sorting trades that are being created in the opening session, right, in that first hour, looking for those opening trades or those singular leg trades that are being created in that first hour of trading, because those are probably trades that somebody is putting capital to work. Now, what happens, though, is as the day continues, right? If I go into our filter and I go back to our screening process based on premium, what we can see is, let's go to options, the options flow page because I'm only on um, NVIDIA. What you can see is that, you know, what, what happens is a lot of these large cap stocks, right? Their, their dominance, right? Starts to dominate the whole landscape of our uh, options flow filter. And that is because, right? They're the more actively traded options, right? In terms of options volume. So, you know, if you're looking at the options flow page and you're kind of doing this process, you might miss out on some of those smaller trades or those trades in some of the more uh, you know not heavily traded options markets you know some greater greater opportunities so sorting being able to sort by time of day can be very crucial for us again notice if i do this i'm looking at some of the trades that were created in the morning look at a lot of these names right names of stocks that are probably not headline stocks i mean here's in united healthcare uh, right so again there might be some 
better trading opportunities to be found in the early morning sessions. And also you're gonna see a lot wider amounts of candidates. Okay. Where are we at, Gene? Okay, I think we're right on time where I thought we'd be. So let's do this, Gene, for a second. Is I see that uh, you've been answering a lot of questions. Thank you, Gene. Let me see if I can take a moment here and kind of just go through the ones that you didn't get to, all right? So I do want to remind everybody that our options flow screener, along with all of our other advanced options pages, uh, like time and sales and all of the option screeners, they're part of a bar chart premier membership. Um, and if you haven't already taken the time to check that out, we offer a free 30 day trial. So uh, there's no reason for you not to go ahead and sign up for a trial and you'll be able to go through this options flow page and uh, look at some of the other options data that we have available on this site. Uh, I also do want to point out, because a lot of people have been asking, yes, you will get a recording of this uh, webinar after the session is over. You can always find the webinar along with the slides that John has been using during today's session on, <clears throat> excuse me, on our archived webinars page. Uh, maybe at the very end of the session, John can skip over there and show that to you. Yeah, I, I, I'll, let's do that first. So you wanted to ask of the archives, right? Right, actually, uh, so like John just asked, where where can I get the copy of the slide? So if you go over to the archived webinars page, it's in the learn menu. Um, you'll see a link to today's session. Uh, and a little bit later on today, the, the video will be available for a replay there. But John's showing where you can download the slides that he's showing in today's session. Yeah, and in all, all of our archive videos do end up on our YouTube channel as well. And there's an opportunity to watch them on YouTube if that's what you want to do as well. So uh, I saw another kind of basic couple, of, I see Gene, you did a great job answering a lot of folks' questions. And I see a lot of the other questions, I think um, I've pretty much answered already, but there was a question here about, um, can I see historical price options data? Again, under the links column here, you can go under here and look at uh, uh, options price history. And again, this could be on a very specific date. And uh, in this case, uh, excuse me, specific option, or you can look at overall history as well. So I think that was one of the questions uh, and with volume, yes. So does the applied volatility, is it by minute? No, it's updated every 15 minutes, the implied volatility. I'm, I'm assuming what you're asking is the implied volatility on the price page. Would you agree with me on that one, Jean? Probably. I am so sorry, John. I'm in the middle of uh, responding yeah, to I'm sorry, a question, and I really didn't hear your. So I you were just... is updated every 15 minutes. And I think the question is, is, is it updated? So the implied volatility on any of our pages is updated on a 15 minute basis basis. Yes. Well, that's yeah, since the options data is uh delayed 15 minutes, yes, we we update that as we get the new data in. Uh so and and just uh asks a funny question, I think is like, I I I hear what he wants, but he he says, will the screener find the most profitable trades and probability of wins? So again, I think uh, this is all about risk management and trading and looking for the right combinations and breaking down the forensics of a trade and we'll go a little bit deeper into that uh in the march one but you know again there's a lot of information that you need to discover and then yes we can add some probabilities to it but to say which ones are going to be winners and which ones would be losers that would be uh I would be discrediting myself and bar chart 
if that I made that claim. All right, uh, what's the benefit? Uh, Christine uh, asks, what's the benefit of looking at options price history? Again, Christina, we were, one of the things we might need to determine is, is that volume that we're trading or we're seeing in those, uh, in those options, is it volume that could be creating a new open position or is it volume that is based on a position that has already been open? And does that volume change our open interests, and that would give us an indication is is that trade being open or is that trade being closed? So that would be important. Also, you can look at, you know, where the trade value was at the time that was being open and the time that was being closed, and that again would give you an indication: is that trader making money or losing money? And again, remember some hedges you might see a, a losing trade but you could go back in time and then say oh well this hedge this put that i bought was a protection for me and then that stock went up and you can kind of do that analysis say well if this trader had x amount of shares you can see what they actually made a loss on that particular trade so you know using price history is definitely a good way to do that um, yeah, so there's a question about promotion for Premier. So let's do that. And let's, let's do takeaways first, because I just say that we're getting a lot of, uh, we've got a lot of questions. Again, I think Gene's done a great job of answering them. Um, again, if you if we didn't answer your question today, please send them to the support at bar chart, um, bar chart dot at barchart.com and we'll answer those questions so let's do a takeaway and then i'll show you where that promotion is so the takeaway here is that you know the options flow page is an excellent tool for identifying large premium trades and not every trade is an actionable trade so again what andre was asking you know the keys will be looking at the size of the trade these clusters of trades that are occurring um, on the same strike or the same call or the same expiration. Um, what is the sentiment of those trades? Uh, what is the volume to the open interest? What's the code? Right? Is it a multi-legged trade or is it a single-legged trade? And again, you know, time of day will make a difference in finding some better actionable trades. But each one of these are just one of many components that we're going to start to tie together to help us find those truly actionable trades. And again, these are the things that we're going to explore a little bit more deeper in our March webinar. And again, all trading, no matter what type of trader you are, no matter what type of derivative you're trading, options for sure, uh, it's really important that you understand uh, your risk, your risk tolerance before you take any type of trades, okay? So that promotion is that there is a free 30-day trial. And again, for premier members, you can try that and you can access all of these cool options, features. Uh, So again, I remind you that we're going to do that upcoming video webinar in March. So what are the things that you can do and make sure you don't miss out on that opportunity is come in here where our webinar notifications, give us your email address. And this is not something we're going to solicit to with you. We're just going to let you know that 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 webinar is coming up and then you can sign sign up for it. Next week, we're off, but in the following week, we're going to do a webinar on one of our investment pages, which is called the eMACD Buy Signal. And I think you will enjoy this one. And for those of you that are Premier and Plus members, we'll market and close is returning again this Friday. So come in and check out that. We've been away for a week, so I guarantee you that there's going to be a lot to talk about 
and this is a little bit more of an intimate setting for our premier and plus traders to have access to me and look at some macro and, mac and micro uh, trading uh, opportunities. All right, Gene, I hope I got everything. Did I miss anything? I don't know. No, just that I'm I'm having a hard time answering everybody's questions here. So if I did not get to your question or if John didn't get to your question, the email is support at barchart.com. Uh, there is a link at the very bottom of our website where you where it says, I believe it says contact support. You can uh, just click on that link and send your question over there. And they'll be happy to either direct the question back to John or myself or answer it directly for you. So if I didn't get to you, please email support. Thank you so much, Gene. I, I can tell you how much I appreciate all the help. And so I think everybody here is thank you for thank you as well. So the folks, please, uh, the best of health out there, uh, manage your risk and the good of all trading.